Hello and welcome to the Z Hut. Today I'd like to show you how to make an ultrasonic alarm. Now <clears throat> this alarm could be used like as a burglar alarm tripwire or you could also use it in your garage as a car parking sensor so you know when you're getting too close to the wall and you're not hitting it. And there's probably plenty of other um, ideas this could be used for and if you have one I did mention Throw uh, a comment down below and tell us what your idea is for using one of these. So, what we'll do is I'll demonstrate it working here quick. Then we'll open it up, look at the circuit inside and how to build it. Then we'll go over to the computer and take a look at the Arduino sketch. So first I'll power it up. You can see when I put my hand in front of it, it triggers the alarm to go off. Now in the sketch, you can set the minimum distance before the alarm will go off. Um, the maximum distance on these, if I remember right, it's four meters. You would have to double check that, but I think it was somewhere in the uh, four meter range. So what we'll do is take a look at the how to build this. So first we got our speaker. And that's just on top of this little project box. Then on this side, I have a plug for a wall wart. You can run anything from 7 to 12 volts on this, and it'll work fine. Then we have our HCSR04 ultrasonic sensor. And that's just uh, taped to the side of the box. I, um, I'm going to use some glue to put this together so it's more permanent, but I wanted to make the video first before uh, I did that because it's going to have to sit overnight to, to dry. But you can use tape. I just got a piece of electrical tape on there. You could use some double-sided tape and it should hold for quite a while. A piece of duct tape would probably be permanent as well. go get the speaker out now for the construction for hooking this up you can see there isn't a whole lot in here we're using a uh, Arduino Nano you could use the Pro Mini Micro Lily Pad I'm pretty sure it would work with this you could use an Uno or a Mega um, but you'd have to use a slightly larger enclosure but uh, pretty much any of the Arduinos will work, work with this without a problem. So what we got is the speaker, and we've got that hooked to the ground, and we've got it hooked to digital pin 3. Then the uh, wires coming in from the ultrasonic sensor, we've got our positive and ground, and they're hooked up to the Arduino's 5 volts. It's, this is a 5 volt device, not a 3.3, so you're perfectly okay to hook this up to 5 volts. Then we have our two pins, our trigger pin and our echo pin. The trigger pin goes to the Arduino pin 9, and the echo pin goes to the <coughs> Arduino pin, digital pin 10. And with that, that's all there is to setting this up. It's real easy. Um, I have another sketch I put together, too, where you can put a... Um, LCD screen on this if you wanted to to display the measurement the distance otherwise how I have it set up now it just use your uh, serial monitor on your computer and you can check the distance and the thing actually starts about an inch out before it starts reading you can't get super super close but um, in the sketch I'll show you how you change the distance the minimum distance to trigger it and um, Let's see, there's, oh yeah, also um, you can have this set up to display in inches or in metric. So whatever you're used to using, that's also in the sketch. And that's, there's just two lines, you just comment out the line that you're not using. So you can use metric or inches. So with that, I think what we'll do is we'll go over to the computer and we'll take a look at the Arduino sketch. So I'll see you there in just a moment. Okay, I have the Arduino sketch brought up, 
Now to get a copy of this, uh, just simply look in the description below and uh, you'll find a link to the website and you can uh, get the Arduino sketch there and there will be more information as well. So what we got first is we're defining which pins our trigger pin and echo pin are on and of course we're putting them on 9 and 10. If you use a different pin, just make sure you change these numbers to correspond with how you're hooking it up. Then we need to have two values here for storing the incoming data from the ultrasonic sensor. So don't change these, just leave these alone. Then in the void setup we're starting the serial and uh, you don't have to use this. This is just for testing if you want to see what distances are being read off of the alarm. Um, it, if you've already measured it out with a tape measure and just put that in below. You won't have to worry about this at all. So it's just optional. So if you're not going to use it, just simply comment it out or delete it. And then next we're setting our pin modes for the trigger pins and output and echo pin is an input. Now we go down to our void loop and we're just making sure the trigger pin's low and we're delaying for two microseconds. Then we're writing it high, waiting 10 microseconds and writing it low. And then what it's doing is it's detecting how long it took for that ultrasonic sound to go out and be received by the, the receiving side of the ultrasonic sensor. Now right here, this line I have it commented out, if you want to use metric, so it would be in centimeters, just, oh, wrong button there, sorry. Uncomment that line and then comment this line out, and this one's in inches, and then um, that's all you got to do. Um, and that will go, this one here would be <clears throat> in inches, and of course this one's metric, so just decide if you want to use metric or inches, centimeters or inches, and just comment out the line that you're not going to use. And I'm using inches, so I'm going to keep the metric line commented out. And what we're doing is we're serial printing the distance it's detecting. And I'm set up for the inch conversion, so it would be printing in inches. It isn't going to say on the serial monitor it's in inches or centimeters. Just remember what you set it for. And of course, if you're not using the serial, I mean, you can leave it there. It ain't going to do anything. Just, just comment it out, though. Now, for the tutorial, I had it set for... Anything under five inches would set the alarm off. If you're using this in a doorway, you're probably going to want like three, four feet. Um, so like 48 inches or so. And this, this sensor easily will do that. Um, the maximum on it, if I remember right, in metric, was it was three meters or four meters, if I remember right. Uh, you look up the data sheet on the HC-SRO4, it'll tell you definitely on there, but memory serves me right, it was, it was 4 meters. So what we're doing is, <clears throat> if it detects, right now I have it set for under 5 inches, if it detects that, it's doing a tone. And it's doing a low and high, kind of giving an alarm sound. Now also... The tones on the Arduino aren't the loudest. I will put um, a link on the website and also I'll probably have one of those cards pop up right here while the video's going on. It'll have a link to how you can amplify these tones and they're almost three to four times louder than normal and it just calls for a 2N 2222 transistor and a resistor. And that's it and you can amplify these tones big time. So then to wrap up the sketch, we just have a delay. Um, I found 50 works pretty good, because the longer the delay, the longer it will take for the loop to go through to play the alarm again. So if you want the alarm to go a little quicker, just change this shorter. If you want the delay between the tones to be longer, just change this, you know, like 500 be half a second, or 225 would be a quarter second. It's up to you, but I found for the demonstration, unit that I built. 50 worked pretty good. 
Well, I think that's all there is to go over here on the sketch. It's pretty simple. This is a nice uh, beginner's project to build if you're just getting into Arduino. And like I said, just go to the website and uh, you'll find that uh, in the link below or in the description below, you'll find a link to it. And um, you can get the sketch there and I'll have more pi um, some pictures and more information on this. And we're not using any libraries or anything, so don't worry about that. Um, the HCSR04 does not need a library to operate. Well, with that, I'd like to thank you for joining us at the Sea Hut today. Have a great day and have fun building.